This is the land of the Warina tribe in the highlands of Papua New Guinea. They are people of the mist, and their homes are anything up to two and a half kilometers above sea level, sometimes in rugged mountains and dense jungle. Ten-year-old Peter Kiwa is on serious business. He's out hunting birds. Peter's mother is working in the vegetable patch, gathering the sweet potato or cacao for the evening meal. With her stick, she prods the earth until she finds a sweet potato. She then lifts out the vegetable without damaging the plant so that it can produce again. Mrs. Kiwa spends most of her day in the gardens, which are spread throughout the area in small plots. There are five children in the family, and sweet potato is the major item in the two meals they have each day. This is why Mrs. Kiwa spends over half her day gathering food. In the district of Konopulu, there are 900 people scattered, living today more or less as their forefathers did thousands of years ago. Peter and his brother Tipo learn most of their skills from their father. Tipo has just had his head shaved because of head lice. Every boy yearns for the day he is old enough to have an axe of his own. Peter already knows how to use it, but his family can only afford one axe. One of his jobs is to look after the sugar cane. his own version of a cut lunch. Six sweet potatoes a day are not really sufficient for an active boy. They provide all the carbohydrate he needs, but not the protein. Peter's sisters spend most of their time with their mother, learning the food gathering skills so essential to survival. The local fishing technique is to wedge a worm in the end of a split bamboo pole and move it about in the water to attract the fish. At the same time, encouraging sounds and words are said in the hope it'll help. When the fish bites, the handwoven net is used to trap the fish. Who forgot the matches? This traditional fire lighting method is very successful and is one of the skills that is handed down from father to son.
All that fuss for a cigarette. Not at all. This is a fire stick and can be carried several kilometers still smoldering to light the fire for a ceremonial meal. But today it's used for cooking sweet potato. The traditional ground oven is used mainly for ceremonies such as weddings or sing-sings. Wood is cut and heaped in a pit and piled with stones. The fire heats the stones which are then covered with banana or other leaves. Food is wrapped in the leaves and covered over to allow the hot stones to do the cooking. For a special occasion, the pit can measure 20 meters long. This enables hundreds of pigs to be cooked to feed the thousands of villagers who come for the ceremony. Peter will come back in six hours to remove the cow cow. This pig has a while to live yet. Peter will be required to give a pig in exchange for his bride one day. At night, the pig sleeps with the family in their hut. It's too valuable to lose. Peter and Tipo do much the same things each day with their father who has never been to school. With the increasing development of Papua New Guinea, the people are now exposed to money, new ideas, and the lure of jobs in the large towns. They are now open to ideas for improving their lives. Mr. Mondo Bermini is a member of Peter's tribal group, but he has received outside education. Mondopa is project manager for an international aid organization which is supporting an agricultural development project that will provide a wider range of nutritious foods and stimulate the growing of cash crops such as peanuts and corn. Mondopa knows that seeing is believing. Initially, his time is taken up in motivating the people to try new ideas, then coming back to check on their progress. They want better food, and they need it because malnutrition is a problem in the area. Demonstration gardens are being set up at different altitudes to show which crops will grow best at each level. 21 villages in the area are trying these new ways. Perhaps Peter will have something more to look forward to in the future. But for the present, it's the same today and the same tomorrow. Kau Kau. Peter and his sisters eat three or four large sweet potatoes twice a day. Sometimes they may have a few greens their mother has gathered from the bush. They eat pig meat on rare occasions. Some say that in early times the lack of protein in their diet caused the people to become cannibals. <laughs> The message has gone out, passed from village to village by the bush wireless yodlers. The Sing Sing is on. The village elders have spent most of the day preparing for the ceremony. In former times, the Sing Sing activities
called on the fertility gods to give a good harvest. Today, because most of the people in the village are Christians, it's a dance celebrating the new food production project. Peter will one day learn how to prepare for the Sing Sing, and so the cultural traditions will be preserved. The local member of parliament and the village elders aim to bring in the positive aspects of the new and retain the best of the old. Some things will never change because children will be children. But in other respects, change has come quickly to the people of Papua New Guinea. Many tribes have been pushed into the 20th century from a Stone Age culture in less than 20 years. The country became an independent sovereign state within the British Commonwealth in 1975. And for Peter, the age-old pattern of same today, same tomorrow is changing. Some of his friends are now attending a local school for now, the promise that his family will have good food tomorrow is enough to satisfy his desires. But perhaps sooner than he knows, he too will find himself sitting in a classroom, having exchanged his leaves and dark belt for clothes, and his axe for a pen. <laughs> 